Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets, and break them down to bite-sized pieces. So today, there's really only two stories. The first up, what is the future of the Cardano blockchain after the merry hard fork? And if you haven't uh, heard, there is going to be a hard fork coming at the uh, end of February, uh, 1st of March, which is going to massively upgrade Cardano and what it can do. And it's uh, the big reason why I stopped dollar cost averaging Ethereum and I'm only going heavy into Cardano. So we'll take a look at that. And there's a lot of uh, layers of the onions to peel back. Now, on top of that, uh, there's a little article that talks about JP Morgan report. JP Morgan, friends of the show. Just kidding, they're not. Uh, it states uh, it's okay to have up to 1% of a multi-asset portfolio in crypto. This is just another example of uh, if you wait for uh, the big people and the smart money to tell you what to do, you're usually way behind. So uh, we'll take a look at those two pieces, but first let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So today it is uh, February 25th, 3.30 p.m. Uh, El Paso, Texas time. Beautiful day here, 70 degrees, can't beat it. And what do we have? Well, uh, Bitcoin has taken a little bit of a tumble as it had before, and we uh, still cannot breach that $50,000 barrier. Some people are talking about Bitcoin going on to 35K. Some people say it's gonna go up to uh, 62 uh, in March. I don't know. Uh, all, all I can tell you is that uh, there's one person I trust. His name is CJ over at Market Rebellion. He says if we can close out this month at 45K, then we'll hit around 60 uh, next month. So uh, not financial advice. I'm not a financial planner, but sounds reasonable to me. Uh, Ethereum looks like, uh, wow, down uh, 2%, 2% around there, 1538 uh, from its all-time high of, of 2,000. Binance coin looks like it's up a little bit. Great, tether's tether. Uh, somebody cares, and that somebody is me. Uh, if you watched the show yesterday, we talked about how uh, Tether had actually, uh, they had settled with the uh, New York Attorney General, and they paid somewhere in like 18 and a half million, somewhere around there. And uh, I just, I, I said, this is great news because now Tether can keep printing. Uh, if it's backed up to the dollar, I don't know. I, I guess them and the, and the New York Attorney General had uh, straightened that out. And some people would ask me, well, why would you pay me money if, uh, if, you, if you were innocent, because it's easier. Uh, I, I've been through lawsuits. I can, I, I can just tell you, when, when you go through lawsuits, it's just easier just to go, look, just, just take the money and just get out of my face so I can just get some stuff done. So that's pretty much exactly what happened. Anyhow, uh, Cardano is up 12%, not surprising after uh, what we're going to talk about. Uh, XRP, watch out, uh, down a little bit, but uh, it's pretty good for, <laughs> let's be honest, XRP is amazingly good for facing a SEC lawsuit. And uh, people have told me, just watch out for the assets that just do not go away and are resilient in the tough times. Those are something to watch. Uh, let's see what else we got. Litecoin. Uh, Litecoin's up a little bit. There has been talk about some uh, privacy feature, Mimblewimble and things like that. I've been hearing that for a long time, so I, I, whatever. I'm not a big supporter of Litecoin. Uh, some people love it. I just don't get into it. That's just me. Uh, and on this channel, if you're new, first of all, welcome. Um, and if you're new, just let you know, I'm very biased to the ones that I actually invest in. I'm not going to lie to you like some other places. Uh, if if I invest into it, usually I cover it. And that's just pretty much how it goes. Uh, so uh, I'm just honest. Uh, Bitcoin Cash up a little bit. Is the anything fantastic? Not really. All right. So uh, well, that's, I'm going to go down a little bit. 5% for synthetics. Great. Ooh, 10% for sushi. DeFi making a strong comeback. Sure. Uh, that's about it. Oh, 30% for Matic, which is a layer two solution for Ethereum. Uh, they're going to need that because those fees are outrageous. All right, let's, uh, let's jump into today's top story and see what the heck is going on. Okay, so this was a, an article, and it was, a, it was a bit ago, but it's found new traction, especially because of this little tweet, uh, which I'll get into in a, in a little bit. But the article just talks about what's the future of Cardano blockchain after the merry hard fork. So if you don't know, there is a they're going through a hard fork. And if you're if you're just a little bit new to cryptocurrency, you may understand that okay, I've heard of a hard fork. You know, the biggest one that I can always think uh, as an example is Bitcoin to Bitcoin Cash. That's a hard fork. And then people say, well, that's that's really not good because you can create other things. But really, a hard fork is in essence an upgrade. So that is what is happening here. It's just an upgrade, and it's a major one. So this is what is going on. So. Mary, a hard fork. Uh, it's going to transition the Cardano blockchain protocol from the Shelley decentralized era closer to the Gogan smart contract. So you have to understand, uh, 
Cardano's been around for quite some time, but when Shelly came around, came along, it became truly decentralized. It opened up a lot of things, uh, especially for uh, people who want to do like stake pools, like uh, myself and my team. We have our own stake pool for Cardano, and uh, it just really opens up a lot of different options to really make things truly decentralized. Now we're going to this the Gogan era, which is the smart contract era, and this is going to be big for many reasons because. Uh, this hard fork was successfully deployed on February 3rd as a test net. And what does it do? It brings native assets to Cardano and allows developers the ability to create custom tokens or migrate existing projects to Cardano. So here's the thing. This is why this is so big. Because if you were, were, were not around 2017, remember that ICO craze? Well, what were ICOs always built on? It was on Ethereum. And everything seems like everything's built on Ethereum. DeFi is built on Ethereum. You have stable coins like Tether and USDC that, that's built on Ethereum. Uh, you have a ton of different assets that are built on Ethereum. ICOs that actually made it and ICOs that didn't actually didn't make it, uh, but they're still built on Ethereum. Now we have an opportunity for developers to create uh, digital assets, cryptocurrencies on a new platform known as Cardano. So uh, this is going to open up a uh, just a, a plethora of options for a lot of different uh, developers, companies, third parties to really get into the fray and use a platform that is really developed uh, not to be super expensive like what is going on with uh, Ethereum right now. And just like they talked about, Bitcoin is, is, is a first generation blockchain. Ethereum is a second generation, did a lot of great things, but Cardano really is a third generation platform and they kind of learn from all the different mistakes that came before it to make something a little bit better. And I think uh, it's going to be uh, massive. Now, again, not to throw shade or to talk negatively about Ethereum. Uh, I own Ethereum, I own a lot of it, not a lot of it, I own enough of it. Uh, but for right now, I will not be dollar cost averaging anymore into Ethereum. I'm looking to Cardano. I don't know which one's gonna be great. I don't know, it, here's the thing. One's gonna be great and one is gonna be awesome. I don't know which one it is, that's why I own both. And that's just why I hedge my bet because I think that's the best option. So when I hear about stories like this, I'm like, just this is just another bullet in the chamber for me to think to myself, I really need to uh, really get heavy into Cardano. Again, this is not a financial advice, not a financial planner. These are just the things that I am investing into. All right. so. When this hard fork occurs, 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 this will unleash the full promise of Cardano for a wide range of services and solutions such as DeFi. That's pretty big. We've heard about that. Non-fungible tokens. We've heard about that. That seems like a pretty big deal. And stable coins. Also, a huge deal, especially if you're a bank looking to get into this area, stable coins could be enormous. And not a stable coin where you have to pay a ton of money to transfer it. Have you tried to transfer USDC off of Voyager to anybody else? It's expensive. Like if I want to transfer, I mean, anything around and as far as a stable coin, it's, it's pricey, especially with Tether, USDC. Actually, I don't use Tether, USDC. So uh, really, is it, is it that good of a service if uh, it, it costs so much? And there's just tons of examples of them out there. So uh, when I hear these things, I'm like, this is a pretty good deal. And this was a tweet from IOHK. They said, uh, today, 20, 2020, the next testnet uh, will hard fork the Cardano testnet and apply the Gogan native token upgrade, aka Mary, transforming it into a multi-asset network. Next comes mainnet, targeted for the end of February. And this is what I was talking about as far as the tweet, because that was the old one. This one was from yesterday. They said, we're on. We can today confirm that the Mary... Cardano protocol update is now fully confirmed for March 1st. So this is one of the big criticisms of Cardano that people would say, you know, that they'll have like an announcement to another announcement and they won't get anything done. Well, here they have an announcement. They said, we're going to do something and it's actually going to be done. So uh, again, take it with a grain of salt. But if they say it's going to be, yep, March 1st, then that sounds pretty good to me. They've been hitting their milestones so far. So I have no reason to doubt them. Uh, and then, <clears throat> excuse me, going back. To finish up, project tokens launched on Cardano do not need smart contracts built on top of its blockchain to be issued. This design reduces the possibility of human error. So this is a confusing topic for me because uh, I'm not a developer. But I'll tell you who is. Uh, there's a real smart guy. And his name, not me. 
this guy right here, Ashoshi. He's uh, one of the guys that uh, I have actually in my uh, recommended uh, YouTube. It's in the description of every one of my videos. If you just scroll down to almost the bottom, he's one of them. And this is a fantastic video. I will link at the very end. And he talks about why that is such a big deal to not have everything kind of uh, so much ingrained into the smart contract aspect. And he really gives it a, a really good um, view from the developer's uh, point. So the last part here is it states ADA, ADA and tokens on Cardano will be fully exchangeable from day one, greatly simplifying DEXs and DeFi applications. So right now, if you use Uniswap or use any decentralized exchange, you know what I'm talking about. You know those fees are crazy. What if you can go to a DEX and use the Cardano token to get any kind of other token that you could want that would be on the Cardano network and you could just swap them out and it'd be super cheap. Wouldn't that be great? Sounds pretty good. On top of the fact that um, I know some people will say, well, everything's built in Ethereum, so how's that going to work? Well, if you, the video we did about a month ago, they are rolling out an ERC20 converter. So what that means is that if you have some type of um, token that's, that's created on the Ethereum network, you can just put it into the ERC20 converter and spit it all out and into the Cardano network it goes. So this will be a pretty big deal, especially for large companies that are building or working in conjunction with Ethereum. Maybe they're like, you know what? I don't know what's going on with this Ethereum 2.0. He says it's gonna be six months, maybe a year. That's a long time. Maybe we'll just go some other place that's might be a little bit faster, uh, might be a little bit better, it might be a little bit cheaper. So we're gonna go this route. And then once you guys figure it out, then we'll talk. These are one of those things that I think about uh, as far as like business owners and whatnot. So uh, what does this mean? Right now, the DeFi and DAP ecosystems are being held back by high transaction fees. We just talked about that. Cardano was, was designed to be of low cost and this will not change. Great, very hard fork and the Gorgon's era upcoming full deployment will bring more third-party developers through Cardano, helping to increase its overall network effects. And this is one of those other criticisms that people would always ask me like, well, who's building on Cardano? What are they really doing? Well, they really couldn't do much because now they need this hard fork. Now that they have it, we'll see exactly what happens. Will developers come over and start to use Cardano more so than Ethereum? Debatable, I have no idea. But uh, from what I was listening to Hashoshi, who told me, he says, look, it's really easy with this, with, with Haskell language, it's, it's simple to do things. He's like, I can do it, uh, he's a developer, so sure. And then they also have a lot of uh, uh, very easy other uh, parts to do for non-technical people like myself. So uh, again, we'll see what happens in the future, but uh, if it's that easy and all these things are making it really easier for you know where people wanna go, it just makes sense. So it really all comes down to this. Where do you go for the things that you wanna do? Do you like to, to make things tough on yourself? and to make it a little more expensive? Or would you just like just to go someplace where it's like, oh, well, you know, I need a dentist. There's a dentist 20 miles away and they're expensive or there's one right on the street and they're half the price. Why don't you just do that? I mean, just seems like that's how it is. I know it's a very oversimplified <laughs> example, but these are the kind of things that I think about. And then lastly, finally, ADA will be fully tradable with native tokens from the start. In Cardano transactions between native tokens do not generate high fees, making DeFi applications even more affordable. And this is also one of the problems with uh, with DeFi right now. So that is what is going on. And then there was one more piece I wanted to bring about, which it talks about, this is the Cardano roadmap. I will link this also in the description. And it talks about Gogan. So we're going into the smart contract era, functionality, uh, these tokens being able to be made, non-fungible tokens and DeFi, all this great stuff, right? There's this thing here called Marlowe. The Gogan era comes as work to make Cardano accessible to wider audiences via Marlowe. What the heck is Marlowe? Well, Marlowe looks like this. So instead of you having to write code, you can just like, okay, look, these are the things that I need to do for my company. I want to have a smart contract, right? So I'm gonna take whatever this is, like we'll just do this one, right? And then I'm gonna do an observation or an action or a value or something like that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click it in here, a constant parameter, whatever, whatever that, that parameter is, right? And then if I wanna do like, uh, more would it be? Oops, we'll move this out of the way. Let's just say we're making it simple. The amount of, then we just put the amounts, the payee, the party, wherever this one slides to, and then off you go. 
And then the token, whichever one you want, ADA, of course. And then you can just make this work and then uh, you can spit it out as actual code. And then that is your smart contract. So like for someone like me, who is an idiot, I have no idea how to do coding. This will be great, especially for someone who knows exactly what they want. They just know how to do the actual coding. So that is what is going on with, with Cardano. And just to summarize real quick, I'm always looking at things as far as like, where will the next big run come from? Because in 2017, we had this, this huge run with Bitcoin. And then everything was, of course, built on Ethereum like we just talked about. So to me, it was kind of like, I didn't really understand the whole process. But now that I know more about like um, uh, everything with like uh, uh, the network effect and how there's uh, interoperability and interconnections and the more people that you have, the more users, Metcalf's Law, those types of things, you can just see that utility drives everything in this market. So the more utility you have and the more people that are actually building on it, the better off you will actually have as far as like a project. So when I take a look at Cardano and all the different things that they're doing right now, it sounds very promising. Do I know for 100% fact that they're going to make it? I don't know. I don't know. I can only look from the eyes of a small business owner, which is what I am, and just go, okay, this would make sense to me, right? If I needed some type of... of uh, cryptocurrency or a smart contract or something to actually move forward as far as a business. And this one's running. It's got a lot of different options. It's got a pretty great, powerful team behind it. It's very cheap as far as the transactions. I'm probably going to go this way. And this is just how I see it. Anyhow, that's what we have for this one. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on to our next piece. Actually, next piece is this. I forgot to mention this. Um, just so you know, you know you can stake Cardano if you want to. We just did a up, uh, update for one of our staking videos, which talked about that for every staking pool that you stake with Cardano, just so you know, you can only, right now it's 63 million that you can stake with uh, for one staking pool. And after that, if you do more than that, you actually lose rewards. What am I talking about? So uh, real quick, <clears throat> This is a staking pool ADLT. I think that's the uh, Ada Lite uh, wallet. If you, let's say you have like a thousand or 10,000 or whatever Cardano that you have, and you want to stake to that pool and you stake to it right now, you are going to lose because it's maxed out at 63 million. 41% rewards are going to be lost. So that's not a pool that you'd want to stake to. And also uh, for ours right now, oops, not this one. We are, we have actually two stake pools. One is at almost 31 million. And you see right here where it says 47% saturation. We did this video over here because we didn't want to have anybody, have more people stake to this, our first stake pool, because at the uh, end of March, there, the Cardano Foundation is going to reduce the maximum supply uh, that you can stake to one staking pool operator to 32 million. So. Uh, just so you know, uh, I'll link this video at the very end. We are almost at saturation point for the new criteria. So we're going to want you to stake to our second stake pool. And uh, that is the information that we have. So if you're looking for like, you know, how do we compare to everybody else? How does it all work? How do I stake with, you know, three different wallets? I, I talk about the Daedalus, Yoroi, and the ADA Lite wallet. If you go to any of our videos, um, there is a, a link. Let me just open this up real quick. Yeah, there I am. Uh, there's always a link in the uh, description of all the videos, and it looks something like this: Dan Cardano Stake Pool. Once you click on that, it'll take you to our 100% free website over here, and uh, you don't even need to do anything for this page. Uh, and as you're scrolling through, you'll uh, notice that this little video will pop up. This is the new video, which explains how to stake, how to do everything, and uh, whatnot. So. Uh, that is it for, for that piece. If you have any questions, just put it in there and I'll answer them to my best of my abilities. All right, let's move on to our last section, which is not really a story. It's just kind of funny to me. And that's why I wanted to talk about it because JP Morgan is ridiculous. Let's just be honest. Because at first they were super, if you think about it like this, JP Morgan is kind of like every other big industry out there. At first they're like super against it. Then they're like, well, you know, stable coins. Well, you know, maybe this, maybe that. 
And then all of a sudden, they're like, you know what? Now, that, now this thing comes up. Okay, well, maybe a 1% of a uh, multi-asset portfolio. How much you want to bet that down the line, uh, they're going to be holding a boatload of Bitcoin because they're like, we don't see any way, we, any, any way else around it. Anyhow, this story, I'll make this very quick. Uh, it was a report published by Bloomberg on Wednesday. Uh, Joyce Chang, global head of research at JP Morgan, talked about cryptocurrencies in a note to clients. And pretty much she just said, it's okay to put like 1% of your portfolio into crypto. So first of all, uh, I'm not going to badmouth JP Morgan uh, because what's the point, right? I'm just going to say this. It's about time. And if all of these big institutions and these hedge funds and these different uh, financial planners and uh, uh, even like endowments or uh, uh, retirement funds, if they would just tell all their clients like, look, Yes, it's volatile. We know it's volatile, but they are some massive asymmetrical returns. You cannot get any more returns like uh, than anywhere else. So what we're going to suggest is put between two and five percent of your portfolio, something very small. So if you lose, it, it's not going to crush you, and uh, that will probably offset anything else that could potentially happen as far as any other black swan events that come about. So let's just do that, Pete, and uh, we'll put it in there. And uh, that should be great. If every single place did that, which they should already do that, because I mean, Bitcoin is the best performing asset in the last decade, um, then I think people would be doing a heck of a lot better. They do a heck of a lot better than just investing into gold. And I can tell you that. And that's something from that's coming from somebody who owns gold and silver and Bitcoin. I don't understand the point of not telling people to get into cryptocurrency if you're a financial planner and analyst. I just don't get it. Anyhow, well, that's it. So, uh, hey, thanks for sticking with me through the whole uh, video. Really appreciate it. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are very time sensitive, so that would be great. Uh, and then I'm gonna link those uh, two videos, one with uh, Hashoshi, where he does, gives a real good breakdown of what's going on with uh, Cardano from a developer's perspective, on top of the D News stake pool, the updated one to tell you exactly how to stake your Cardano to make passive income uh, between four to six percent APY, which is the uh, standard average. All right, so that's it. So, and uh, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it, and I'll see you on the next one.